Hi, I'm Maria from Nancy's Notions and today I'm going to be showing you how to turn your favorite fabric panel into a cherished project for your home. We chose the Family Rules panel, which you'll see here, and it has great phrases that a lot of us use at home, but now you can make it into a wall hanging. This is a great project for beginners because all we're going to do is trim the panel, add some simple borders, layer it like a quilt, do some simple quilting and binding and a rod pocket to finish. So come on, let's get started and make this wall hanging. First thing I'm going to do is trim up the sides and you can see there are some dotted lines that were printed on the panels so the girls or guys that are cutting use that to cut the panels apart on the yardage. Um, you have a 45 inch long piece of fabric that goes selvage to selvage and then it is about 23 inches wide so that tells me that when I cut my border pieces I'm going to need four strips two for each side they're going to be the same length because they're also with the fabric and then the other two will go across the top and the bottom to finish it off so using the ruler i'm going to eyeball the letters across the bottom of this panel because i don't want to cut a strip that's going to make it look cockeyed at the bottom i do want it straight but like most fabrics you can't always trust that the selvage is straight so i'm going off the printing that's here instead and i've got about an inch and a half from the letters down to where I'm going to trim. Do the same thing up at the top. I've got my edges cleaned up and those are all ready to go. Next I'm going to cut my border pieces. I'm going to cut four two and a half inch by with the fabric strips to make my borders on the outside of the quilt. Now head with me to the sewing machine and we're going to add some borders to my fabric pre-printed panel. So first step, get your machine set up to sew. I've got it threaded, I have thread in my bobbin, and I need a quarter inch seam to do the borders on here because that's standard when you're quilting. I have the standard foot on here, so I'm going to go into the settings and I'm going to adjust the width of my needle over a few clicks till I have a quarter of an inch from the needle to the edge of my sewing foot and now I can use the edge of my foot as my quarter inch guide. It's very simple. Get out your book, check your settings on your machine and just follow the directions for moving that needle over if you need to. So I'm going to line up the edges of my fabric. I've got my panel underneath this is a, a cotton that is the same on both sides, but you want to make sure the right side of the fabric is now facing the right side of your panel. And I'm going to line them up and get them under the needle. And stitch. And I'm going to stop every once in a while and adjust my fabric, make sure the edges are still lining up. If you're not comfortable adjusting as you go, then take the time on your table to just add a few pins to hold those layers together. Now I'm going to go over to the ironing board and I'm going to press this piece away from the border and look at that nice clean edge. So now I have my side borders on. I'm going to come back to the cutting mat, get my ruler and my rotary cutter and trim off the edges before I add the second set of borders. So simply line your ruler up along the top edge of the quilt or the panel. Here's that little piece of border I need to trim off. I now have a clean edge to add the next border to. So now back to the sewing machine to add two more borders. So now to add this border on, I'm going to let it overlap just a little bit or hang off the edge. And I'll come back later and trim that so I have a nice clean square corner to my wall hanging. So I'm back at the cutting mat, ruler and rotary cutter in hand, and I'm going to line up the edge of that border, put my ruler back on there, and clean up this little corner here so I've got a square edge to my project. That's simple. I have added my borders, my two longest ones first, and then we came back and added the top and the bottom, and now we're ready to sandwich. So a sandwich consists of my quilt top, in this case our fabric panel, 
batting. I like to add about three inches to each side, especially on my larger quilts, because as you quilt, sometimes the batting disappears a little bit with all that stitching. So to make sure I have enough, I like to leave myself that three inch border all the way around. Same thing with my backing. And my backing is the same fabric that I used for the borders in this case. There are plenty of prints out there. You may even have some fabric in your stash that will match that panel that you're working on. Whatever the case, you want a nice flat piece. I sometimes come to the table and put a few pieces of tape to hold it still on the table while I put the other layers on. Something this size, you maybe don't have to worry about it shifting too much, but you want it to stay flat so there's no puckers or tucks that form as you're doing the quilting on your wall hanging. Now that I have it all sandwiched, I like to just run my fingers over it, make sure I'm not feeling any, any weird tucks underneath there, or maybe the batting got creased a little bit. I want a nice, flat, smooth surface. I like to use these colored safety pins to do my basting. For one thing, they're colored, and for the other thing, they show up nice on top of almost any fabric, and I put them about the distance around my hand, about four inches away, is perfect for doing something like this and even for my larger quilts. If you start in the middle and work your way out then everything remains nice and flat and smooth. So I'm going to put a few in here to show you. They only need to stay in until I get to that area of the quilt for stitching and then I take them out as I go so by the time I'm done quilting there shouldn't be any pins left. Once I've got the entire surface pinned, the next step is to go do some quilting. You can choose to use a colored thread, you can use monofilament that is really invisible on top of the quilt. I chose to follow the brick lines that are in the fabric for a design, so I didn't have to draw something. I'm simply going to follow along these gray lines, and as I come to the vertical line I'm going to go up and down again and across and just keep working my way back and forth until the entire background is done. Have fun quilting your project and tune in next week to see how we add a rod pocket and binding to finish off your quilt. Nancy's Notions offers a full selection of products to further inspire your sewing and quilting skills. These pre-printed panels are the perfect gift for both the beginner and advanced quilter. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, be sure to hit the like button and comment below to tell us what you think. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and thanks so much for watching. Remember, burns and throw it all over my shoulder. <laughs> I'm a mom of four, so you have to be many, many things all along those years, you know? You're a woman of many voices. <laughs> Oh, you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> <Duh>. <laughs> Come sew with me. <laughs>